I'm going to be sharing with you how I digitally plan out all of my lessons, my classroom management system and reward system. I'm also gonna be sharing with you some prep hacks. Hi, good morning. It's about 6.50, making my coffee, getting ready to go out the door and start a new day. I'm excited for you to come along with me. Coffee, water, lunch, school bag. I think we're ready. We are here. It's about 7.15. Um, I don't live super far from my schools, which is a plus. Let's get this day started. Hi, art teachers. I'm Marina Alfera. I am an elementary art teacher in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Make sure you like this video and are subscribed to the Art of Education University for more day in the life videos just like these. So this is my setup for filming tutorials. I have this like gooseneck iPad holder and I attach it to the side of one of my students' stools. So nothing fancy. I do that to get a little bit more height so that they can see everything happening. And usually I do like a voice over. I usually don't talk while I'm demonstrating in the video because I've learned that I talk a lot and it takes way longer than I wanted to. So let's start with the OOTD. Today I have on an Andy Warhol artist band tee and it goes along with the project my kindergartners are doing. They are creating Andy Warhol flowers. So I figured I'd throw my Andy Banty on with some black pants, black loafers. This shirt, actually, it came from my side hustle. I love Banties, like a good ACDC or Def Leppard, but guess what? I don't know any of their songs. I might know like one each. When my students come in, we, I just, click on their box and it takes me to their art room, their grades virtual classroom, and then I'll click on the link and it will take me to the tutorial. So I have the Art of Education University's Flex curriculum and it has honestly been game changing when planning my lessons because you can go on and they have so many videos for you already. For example, my first grade is learning about pop art. I embedded one of the videos from the Art of Ed's Flex curriculum right into my lesson. They are so engaging. They are on my students' level, so it's not like anything they don't understand. So over here, I have my supply shack. I put out all of the materials my students are going to need for that cycle. I prep them on the supply shack at the beginning of the cycle. It's because I don't have any transition time, this helps me to just grab what we need. Or if my students need something, they come over, they can find it on the supply shack. I also keep a bookshelf by my supply shack with other materials that we use really often. So like Sharpies and quick sticks, oil pastels, markers are here because you never know what you're gonna need and when you're gonna need it. Okay, so let's talk about this microphone that I use. It's like a headset speaker combo. This is the Zowie Tech. So I used to just clip it. It has a clip on the back. I used to just like clip it to my pants or clip it wherever, but it kept falling off and I actually broke one because it fell off. Comes with this little belt and I just clip it around my waist here which is actually quite nice because it stays in place. And then I just put this little headset on. And this saves my voice. I can talk at a normal volume and they can hear me in the back of my room. I mean, my rooms aren't like super huge, but they're big enough. And it's nice because I can use my hands. If, you know, art teaching doesn't work out, I can always like, I'm ready to be a pop star or a telemarketer, whatever comes first, but I highly suggest getting yourself one of these. Today, we are gonna start to map out our Wayne Tebow ice cream cones. We're going to repeat that cone shape to show repetition, okay? Um, we're going to add shadow, like Wayne Tebow did in his artwork. Cool, Win. awesome. To get started, I need you just to <clears throat> Wait, wait, watch, watch listen, listen, and then I'll let you know 
when to get started, okay? Third grade is working on Wayne Tebow ice cream cones with oil pastels. And we have them organized by color in our blue trays at our table. Handmade handout to help with shading. Okay, so over here in my supply shack, I have these um, serving trays and I use these to um, organize student oil pastels. So I just separate them by color and then the students can easily find whichever color we're using or whichever color they need. They honestly keep them pretty organized. It's worked out for us pretty well. And so these come in handy. So this is my desk area. Um, tomorrow I go back to my other school, but everything is pretty much similar. And if you've seen my season one episode, I show both rooms and I talk more about being a traveling art teacher. But I wanted to share with you how I keep my brain organized as a traveling teacher, as far as planning what I'm doing. I keep all of my links and timeline and everything in this Google slide to help me keep each grade organized. So I teach kindergarten through fourth grade. It, I have links and I have just like bullet points of what each grade is doing in one cycle. So once I have everything in my digital planner kind of planned out for the next couple of cycles, it's easy to go into that digital planner and pull that information and put it into my virtual classroom. I know it's like so much, so much technology, but honestly, this is just what's worked for me. As art teachers, we can't really prep much of our materials and things at home, cutting paper, prepping paint. So by being able to prep and plan at home on my digital planner, and then being able to access it in multiple locations is so super helpful. Um, I just think it's really important to remember how unique our field is of art education. You can see here that I have different columns for all of my different grades. Every time I start planning a new cycle, I just duplicate the um, page. So I would go here, I would right click and I would hit duplicate slide and I can edit it. And then you can see like, these are all of my past cycles. I have my custodians save the ends of paper towels. If there is something messy that we're doing that students need a quick paper towel, instead of constantly just ripping and ripping paper towels until the cows come home, I take a box cutter very carefully. I will cut down one side of the paper towel roll. And so then you have a bunch of pre-cut paper towels ready to go. Once I have some of those paper towels cut from the roll, I'll stick them in this bin and just wet them with a little bit of soap, a little bit of hand sanitizer, just in case we need like a really quick wet paper towel. If we don't have time to fully wash our hands at the sink, I will have them do what I call the walk and wipe. So they kind of just go in a line around the room. Um, they grab one of these out of the bin, wipe their hands a little bit, continue over to my garbage can and then into line while they are wiping their hands with the wet paper towel. Usually by the time they're gone, it's time to refresh them anyway. Okay, it is 12 17. I just finished um, four back-to-back -back classes. I have a 30 minute lunch and then I have three more classes and my prep period is at the end of the day today. So it's a marathon, um, but we're doing it. So for lunch today, I have salad. I really try to meal prep my lunches for the week. I really try. If it doesn't happen on Sunday, then it usually doesn't happen. And I love cafeteria pizza more than like just as much as the next person, but try to be a little bit healthy. I'm not saying I'm a chef. This sounds pretty good. If the art teacher thing doesn't work out, culinary school, here I come. Just kidding, nobody wants that. One batch prep hack that I use is anytime I'm using a tracer. So yes, sometimes I use tracers because I think it's important for the student's fine motor skills to be able to trace certain shapes. Tracers like this with tag board. I choose a couple of my older students 
who have really great fine motor skills, I give them the task of helping me cut out my tracers because I have to create double the amount of tracers. It takes a pretty long time. It hurts my hand, I'm not gonna lie. I, get, I cramp up. And this not only saves me time, it saves my hands and um, the students love doing it. And I usually give them a little reward for helping me out. So I wanted to share my classroom management system with you. It's kind of like my reward system. We call it, I love art. And what happens is that each table has a little scorecard with a little clothespin. So I might say, table four, I love how you're sitting like Mona. They get to clip up to the first heart and they've earned one point. And then if I said table four, I love how you're working quietly. That's the second compliment. They clip up again. I used to have them start with four points and throughout class I would take them away. So I'd say table four, give me a point. You're not doing this, that or the other. And I just felt like it was constantly negative. Um, so I flip flopped it and now they are earning their points. And I would notice that I was complimenting them anyway. Behind me, you will see I have class scoreboards. At the end of class, I say to them, okay, count up your points. You either earned one, two, or three, or none, and go put them on your scoreboard. So then I have these little hearts. The table has a square in their classes scoreboard. So this is one scoreboard here behind me. And they put either one, two or three hearts in their tables square. So at the end of each quarter, we count up the hearts, whichever table in their class has the most hearts, those students win face paint. So we take a day, we do like an Artsonia sketchbook day. I paint their faces and they live for it. I honestly have seen such a change in my students. I also wanted to say that the face paint was a fellow art teacher friend's idea. If they don't want their face paint, I tell them I could do their hand or I have like stickers or other little things, but I usually don't have many turn down the face paint. It is 2.50 and my prep period started at 2.45. I am so exhausted. It's taking everything in me right now not to just sit down, but I have to film a tutorial and clean some of the dumpster area back there, the disaster paint sink area. So I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna power through. I'm gonna do it and then we can go home. I think it's really important to talk about work and home life balance. I have four kids. I have a toddler and an infant. Well, baby, she's eight months. And then I have two older sons. A lot of fellow art teachers are parents. A lot of them are not, which is great. I can only speak of my experience, my current experience as a, as a mom. My advice to fellow mom art teachers would just have to be that you are doing amazing things. Some days, it feels like we are drowning. It feels like we have no idea what we're doing. It feels like we should just throw the towel in because <laughs> it's too much. Um, yesterday, I had to leave my daughter at home with my husband, he was off. I had to leave her home sick with a fever to come do my job. And a lot of times we're leaving our babies to teach other people's babies and that itself just speaks volumes about what kind of person you are. When you're unsure of your why, just remember that even when it might not feel like it, you are making an impact on at least one of your students. Okay, friends, it is 3.55. I am exhausted and my day is just about over. I hope you had fun coming along with me in a day of my life. I hope you enjoyed learning how I digitally prep, how I run my reward system, and how I use a virtual classroom to stay organized. If you haven't done so already, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the Art of Education University for more videos like this. Bye.